So in my last video, I kind of gave the final update on my Appalachian Trail through hike this year. So if you haven't watched that, I will link it below so you can get all caught up. But in that video, I asked you guys to ask me questions and I'm gonna sit here today and answer them all for you. I'm actually in a little lookout place off the Kangamangas Highway. It's absolutely beautiful this time of year. Uh, I came up to the White Mountains with my mom to do a little work trip and I'm gonna film this video on our way down. And my mom is the cameraman right now, so applaud for mom. <laughs> Before we get into answering all the questions, I do just wanna thank Element who is sponsoring this video. Element is the electrolyte drink mix that I have all the time. In fact, I am actually running a half marathon this weekend and I've been using Element throughout all my training for this half marathon. So my kind of routine is I come home from work, have an Element drink mix, hop on my treadmill, run a few hours. And when I drink the Element, I just feel really good about myself because I tend to get some headaches if I push myself a little too hard because of all the sweating and the dehydration. So when I have my Element drink mix, I can just make sure I have the sodium that I'm sweating out and I can avoid the headaches. So if you wanna pick up Element for yourself, I have a link which is drinkelement.com slash Hampshire. Any purchase on their website, you'll get a free sample pack when you use that link. Drinklmnt.com slash Hampshire, and that is also in the description of this video. All right, let's get into the questions. So close to another through hike. I can't imagine doing all that and not finishing with only 87 miles to go. What, four more days, great job though, do what feels right. And yes, there were only 87 miles left, but I could absolutely not do that in four days. I think the biggest logistical problem that I forgot to mention in that last video is the Kennebec River. So if you don't know, the AT goes right over the Kennebec River. And typically during through hiking season, there's a guy in a canoe that helps shuttle hikers across the river. but now that it's October, uh, that service isn't there anymore. So I would have to find a way to cross the river. You can't cross it safely by like swimming or fording it or anything. So I would either have to hike 20 miles to get to the river and then turn around and hike 20 miles back and then drive around. And it just seemed like a nightmare. This 87 miles definitely wasn't something I could do in four days. It was looking like more a week maybe even more than that between all the driving and all that stuff. So, and like I said in the last video, it just wasn't something I felt like doing, to be honest. Next, I have seen a couple years of folks doing the AT, but vlogs on the long trail are scarce. Have you considered doing it? I actually have considered doing the long trail. Um, I think in 2022, like kind of the year in between my two through hikes, I thought about it, but I don't know. I just never really committed. It's if you don't know, the long trail goes the whole length of Vermont. I believe it's almost 300 miles. So I could probably do that in a month. It's not off the table. I think out of all of the through hikes or long distance trails, the long trail's probably on the top of my list, but no real plan to hike it right now. A video series thought my wife and I are going to hike New Hampshire and take on at least some of the 48 New Hampshire 4,000 footers. Do you have suggestions about where to start or how to approach that? So I think I have a couple videos on my channel already about beginner New Hampshire 4,000 footers. My personal recommendation would be Mount Pierce. I think it is, I mean, compared to the other hikes, I think it's easier. I never want to say a 4,000 footer in New Hampshire is easy, but it's all relative. Mount Pierce, in my opinion, is a good beginner hike and the views are insane. I believe that was my second 4,000 footer and that's the peak that kind of got me hooked on it. So once I was at that summit, I knew I wanted to hike all of the 4,000 footers. So hopefully if you start out with Mount Pierce, you can kind of get that hiking bug too. Do you feel like this might've been your last through hike or do you think you'll do more in the future? Um, this is my last through hike for now. Um, I always kind of thought that maybe in my retired stage of life, I would do the PCT. Um, that's not completely off the table. And I still want to do chunks of the AT here and here and there, but honestly, all the through hiking this year kind of burned me out for the meantime. And I'm not really thinking about doing another through hike right now, but it's not off the table. Maybe I'll do another through hike, but if I'm fit and feeling good at like 50, 60 years old, I'd love to attempt it then. How do you think you would have felt if Cody did not come for the rest of the through hike? 
Um, I think I probably, it would have been the same outcome, I think. I don't think I would have quite finished it. I think I would have gotten to all of these dangerous road crossings and done the same thing and done all these crazy road walks around it. Uh, I probably still would have run out of time. <laughs> so, I don't know. I think I still would have done the same thing, but Cody, I mean, just made it so fun. Like, we were laughing, we were chatting. Like, it definitely brought up the mood a lot, uh, but I think I still would have had the same outcome with him there or not. Um, you actually did an extra 26.2 when you ran that marathon during your through hike. Do you see yourself doing more road or trail running events in New England in the future? So yes, I guess I have that half marathon this weekend, but I typically do run a marathon every year or every other year. Uh, I'm not, I wouldn't consider myself a great road runner, but it's, I like signing up for the marathons. It has, it's something for me to look forward to. I think marathon days are just really fun. A lot of times I travel to do the marathons. I would love to do the marathon in Tokyo. Um, I've done marath I've done the marathon in Paris. So I'm definitely going to sign up for some marathons and road races. I guess this person specifically asked in New England. Um, maybe. Um, but I also do love traveling for marathons. So there'll be more of that in the future. And trail running? I'm not sure. If there's a cool one that comes up and I feel like signing up. Usually when I sign up for races, it's with my friends. So if my friends can convince me to do a race, I will for sure sign up with them. Do you think you'll ever hike the AT again? I think that's a similar question to the one before, but yeah, maybe the AT again, maybe the PCT, but I'm thinking like decades in the future. If you're going to do some day hikes, what part of the AT are the most exciting? What parts would you recommend? My husband and I love challenges with the day pack. We we're thinking New Hampshire, the Whites, Mount Katahdin. Um, I think New England, specifically New Hampshire and Maine, has amazing day hikes if you're up for the challenge. Uh, I personally <laughs> love hiking in Virginia because it's like nice and cruisy and it's not much of a challenge. But if you're personally looking for the challenge, do some of the New Hampshire 4,000 footers that are on the AT. Those are all amazing. Franconia Ridge, Presidentials. Maine is a little tricky, like Mahusik Notch, definitely tough. Some of the 4,000 footers in Maine are fun. Uh, Mount Katahdin would be a great choice, but it seems like this person knows what's up. Definitely White's Mount Katahdin, great choices. Based on your experience this year, would you recommend that it may be better to go north to south as opposed from south to north that you did this year? I honestly think the Sobos this year that went from Maine to Georgia had it really rough, <laughs> to be honest, because the typical start date for Sobos is June, June or July, and that's when the rain was the worst. So I feel like if I did it Sobo this year and I had to start off with all that crappy weather and be in Maine and New Hampshire and have some of the hardest terrain, I think that would have just completely defeated me. I would be curious to know what the, I don't know, what the success rate was for Sobos versus Nobos this year. I feel like that would be interesting. But for me, Nobo this year worked out really well because it was smooth sailing until I got to New England. No matter what, if you go Nobo or Sobo, you're probably hiking in June and July and you were going to experience that awful weather. But the weather is so different year to year. Next year, you could hike the AT and not have any of this crazy summer rain. Um, I know when I hiked in 2021, rain was definitely not an issue at all. And it was very, I don't want to say easy hiking, but it went smoothly. So it just really depends. And that was the last question I had screenshot, but stay tuned. I'm going to put a ton more videos out. I have some really fun hikes planned. They're going to be really beautiful. And I'm excited to film and show them. But now we're going to go head to Lincoln, grab a bite to eat, vis visit Virgin Outdoors, uh, meet with Rudy, and have a nice you know, Wednesday morning or afternoon in the White Mountains. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Oh, that was adorable.